We're going to look at a 30, 60, 90 triangle. But what we're going to do before we do that is we are actually going to look at where this is going to come from. OK. You guys, this is an equilateral triangle. How big are all the angles? 60. OK. OK, girls? I'm going to drop the altitude here. Something you don't know about triangles, or at least if they're isosceles, this altitude here bisects this angle, so that's 30. OK? Now, I could, and this, by the way, bisects this side, so that these segments here are congruent. Now, if I said all these segments were 1, Eric, you need to pay attention so you know how to do it. And if this side is 1, what would this side be? A half. Do you guys want to deal with fractions or not? Uh, fractions are my enemy. Let's not deal with fractions. Because we can make the sides anything we want. Okay. So if I make this side 2, then this whole side is 2, and this side is 1. Now, one of the things I saw that you were making mistakes on with right triangles is you want to say that 1 squared plus 2 squared is h squared. That is not true. h squared, like squared plus like squared is hypotenuse squared. So this is h squared plus 1 equals what? 4. We subtract 1 from both sides. h squared equals 3, and then we square root. Just showing where the numbers are coming from. Okay, TJ, you're going to get really confused in this if you don't pay attention. Now, it's just Pythagorean's theorem. There's my work. I can make any multiple. I could take a triangle tiny or bigger than that. The ratios of these sides are always the same. This is 2x, this is 1x, and this is x times the square root of 3. You're not going to know how to do this. Okay? Now, how do you decide which side is x squared to 3 and which side is x? And a 45, 45, 90, and the lengths are the same. No big deal. What I do here is I find the 30 degree angle and I go across to the opposite leg. And if you know that you have a triangle, a right triangle, and this is 2 and this is 4, I know I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. You can use Pythagorean's theorem to find that piece. But why? I already know what the answer is 2 squared or 3. So let's go back into the notes, fill that out, and try some problems. OK. Now, we talk about the shorter leg. The shorter leg is opposite the 30 degree angle. So this is going to be 2x. Actually, they called it a. This is going to be x, and this is x squared root of 3. So if you look at this diagram, the longer leg, the short leg has a. This is a squared root of 3. And this is 2a. Now, we want to make equations. We want to label the triangle. Some of you weren't willing to do that on the 45, 45, 90s. But you really do need to do that. Because this is harder. I find the 30 degree angle, and the side opposite is the x. The hypotenuse is twice that, always. It's 2x. So what, how big is that going to be? 10. And then this long leg is x times the square root of 3. x was 5, so it's 5 square root of 3. So it's a little harder than the 45, 45, 90s. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the cable. OK. Let's try this one. Well, the hypotenuse is always 2a or 2x. I like x's better myself. That's always the case when you do 30, 60, 90s. Well, then I go find the 30 degree angle. The side opposite the 30 is the x. Then the other one is x times the square root of 3. You have to remember x, x square root of 3, and 2x. That's what you have to remember for the sides. OK, Jacob? So what's x equal to? 6. So this side is 6, and this side is 6, square root of 3. 
And you see how I made this easy? I labeled my sides with these up here. And if you don't do that, you're going to be in a little bit of trouble, I think. OK, let's label this. TJ looks kind of complicated. First I do the hypotenuse, because that's easy. At least I got one of them right. This one is x, and this is x square root of 3. So what's x? x is going to be 9, and the hypotenuse will be 2 times 9. No, we'll get the harder ones. Next one's harder. Now you have to know where this, this could be rotated. On the mixed practice ones, they are rotated. Okay, so let's label this. This is 2x. This is x. This is x square root of 3. This is where you were getting stuck on the 45, 45, 90s. I need to figure out what x is. I wish there were a square root of 3 there, but there's not. Yeah. It's okay. It's just a number. How do you solve that equation? Divide by the square root of 3. It's just a number. Now, I don't know what the square root of 3 is. 1.5 maybe? No, bigger than that. So they get canceled, and it's 7 divided by the square root of 3. Now to make it even harder, this is 7 divided by the square root of 3. I have to multiply that by 2. I'm going to do this slowly. 2x is 2 times 7 over the square root of 3. Okay, to multiply fractions, you do the top numbers, which is 14 and the bottom numbers, which is square root of 3. It's a weird looking number. And no, you didn't do this in fifth grade because you didn't do square roots in. OK? But the equations you've been solving, it just bothers you that that's the square root of 3. But it's just a number. I don't care what the number is. Now we have an application problem. I want to find the area. There is a formula for area of these things. But I don't know what it is. I, well, I do. That's not true. This is 36. This is 36. And this is 36. TJ, what's the formula for the area of a triangle so I know what to do? Uh, One half base times height. OK, what's, what's the base here? Yeah, but I have to know what the height is. Guess what? I don't know what the height is. Well, I will shortly. This is 60. This is 30. How big is that, Zach? Zach? How big is this side? No, not 90. Half of 36. Close. It's 18. Okay, Shh. you guys. Label, Zach, label the triangle. This is 2x. This is x. This is x times the square root of 3. What's the height equal to? Sorry, that's not x. That's x. That's not x. 18 is x. So it's 18 times the square root of 3. OK, so we put that in. So I'm going to put that in right there. And then some of you have problems. You get confused with distributive property. This is not distributive property. Distributive property needs addition in there, and there's no addition. It's all multiplication. This is associative property. TJ, what's half of 36? I guess I'm going to have to come up with a seating chart. Now, do you guys know what 18 times 18 is? Besides me. What's 20 squared? 324. Okay. Zach, up here. Well, you know, you made the choice. You keep making the choice. Okay. Oh, did I find? Yeah, I found the area. Find the perimeter of this, and it says the height is 7 times the square root of 3. Okay. How am I going to label the sides? Jacob, what's this side? 2x. This side is 30, 60, so this is x. 
And this is x square root of 3. That's what you want to do. What's x? Yeah, it's permanent. X is 7. Right? Is that right? Jacob, is, is that right? Is it 7? You need to pay attention. Then what's this side? 14. I want the perimeter. How many, how many 14s do I need? No, well, it's a perimeter. It's equilateral. How many 14s? Three. You guys know what 3 times 14 is? 42. Okay. Then you have your homework. It's 35. It's 35. Okay, next thing. Shh. Think about it. It's 40. No, you're right. You're right. Okay, you guys, you had a, guys, shh, you had a worksheet on radicals. Do you have questions for me on that? That's the assignment due today. I have a little bit of time. I can answer some questions. Okay, you guys, your worksheet for today, do you have questions? I'm trying to find one. No, I can't find one. Oh, maybe it's in my file here. <laughs> do I have to sit up here? Yes. No. Yes, but you have time in class to work on it. Yeah. But I'm asking if there are questions on the homework for today. 